The people in hyperinflationary countries such as Iran, Venezuela, uh, or Indonesia, uh, really interesting to me because um, it it really shows you know how the progress of uh, Bitcoin education advances there. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to speak to Dia Retskitka. She is an amazing educator, podcaster. Uh, her podcast channel is My Bitcoin Story. And she's also been on Max Kaiser's show, done interviews with Robert Breedlove. And I uh, really love her, her comments on Twitter. Uh, very insightful, very deep. So yeah, without further ado, this is my talk with Dia Retskitka. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm really looking forward to that. If you have loved this, if you do love this episode as much as I will, please give it a uh, not only a like but a five star review on Apple Podcasts, or iTunes. Thank you so much. And here you go, dear Retskita. Hi, dear. How are you doing? Welcome to the I'm show. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me for the to the show. Yeah, sure. Dear, you. So I've been following you, uh, watching your uh, also your the interview. Great interview, by the way, with um, with Robert Breedlove. And oh, yeah, and also, of course, on Max Kaiser show, really interesting stuff uh, you put out there also content wise. So you, you're pretty like multifaceted, like, like you're a blogger, you're an educator, definitely a you know, Bitcoin educator, blogger, YouTuber. Um, can you like tell my listeners a little bit about your background, like your, your journey before how you got into Bitcoin and before and, and, and now? Yeah, uh, it's very interesting because uh, my journey into Bitcoin was actually started in 2016. And it was really random, like uh, there is a Bitcoin ATM in Bali and then uh, in, in this one of the co-working space. And then I'm just like curious um, and we decided to just put $10 worth of uh, Indonesian rupiah uh, and then exchange to Bitcoin. And then I thought like, wow, this, this, this internet money is really interesting. And at that time I was just starting my business and I can uh, see like how Bitcoin really helps me in the hard time, you know, like when you start doing business, like sometimes you have clients, sometimes you don't. And Bitcoin at that time to 2017, that's like the bull run. So like, yeah, I was like uh, getting a lot of help from Bitcoin. And I even like uh, accepting payment through Bitcoin, etc. So like my 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 first journey is just like being using Bitcoin and then getting profit out of it. But uh, when I started to go into the rabbit hole is actually in uh, 2020 last year when yeah you know like my business stopped uh, because uh, it's it's related to tourism and in Bali like everything is all about tourism. So like I'm just trying to think like what what should we do to prevent uh, stuff like this to happen? And I I, I own Bitcoin, but uh, I wasn't really thinking about that that much. But then I used the time that I haven't had, so I just used that time to really study about Bitcoin. And then it's just blow my mind, like you know, listening to different podcasts, Robert Breedlove, and then reading books like the Bitcoin Standard to just like open my mind. Um, and I, I, it, it was really funny because I was just like, uh, sharing it with my friends. I, uh, you know, just like posting random stuff on Instagram and also Twitter, but a lot of people liking it. So then I decided to like, Hey, let's just get together and then talk about Bitcoin. And that's how class Bitcoin started. So I just do run like a weekly, uh, education about Bitcoin, whatever I learn, because I think like the best way to, to learn something is actually to teach. So then like if people, um, if people doesn't uh, get it, so I mean like I'm not clear enough. And it was really interesting because uh, the people who attend uh, the, the weekly uh, class uh, through Class Bitcoin, it's, it's just very, um, very uh, uh, different age categories. So there's like millennials, but there's also like people above 50 years old. So it's it's interesting to to see a different uh, view of Bitcoin from different age brackets. Well, that's interesting journey. So a lot of people, 
because this is what I what I hear um, from other people too that they they use sort of the the time you know during the lockdown or whatever you know this Corona COVID hysterical thing that's going on and really had the opportunity for the first time you know to go into the rabbit hole. Um, so what I'm interested, what's the sentiment of the people that's coming to you for, you know, for getting education and, and, and informing themselves, uh, like demographic wise, like you, you, you know, you just mentioned there are different ages, you know, different people, like what, what kind of intention or motivation are they coming to you? Well, of course, motivation is, is to get money. Um, like a lot of Indonesian uh, during this Corona time, they like a lot of people uh, were uh, got fired from their job or like their business got stopped. So they need to find a, different ways to make money. And uh, in Indonesia, like I think in the past two, three years, uh, investment uh, like stock investment is growing in Indonesia. So people are looking for different like alternative of how I can invest money so then I can get money quickly but this is the hardest part of the education to un to to make um, an understanding that Bitcoin is for long run it's not like a get rich quick kind of thing a yeah, scheme kind of thing um, so and and I think my my um, angle or like my my focus is to really uh, teach people about saving getting trendy right now uh, so a lot of people think about trading and and yeah and get money quickly uh, but people who attended my uh, my classes normally they they just really curious about what is this bitcoin why everyone is talking about it and you know why all these companies uh, are are start you know investing in bitcoin when they read the news and they don't understand and especially because the entry point is is very much like a trading focus so it's too much uh, too much going on on the on the crypto exchange platform so they just want to know uh which like you know how they can invest their their money uh safely at the moment and and also for the for the future if they need to if yeah like let's say this thing happened again COVID happened again they need to be prepared Something what's like the that. what's the population size of indonesia we are roughly around 300 million wow uh, okay. yeah and then it's, it's very interesting because um from 300 million there's like 180 million are internet user Mm -hmm. um, and we are like the largest in Southeast Asia when it comes to internet users. So uh, actually, um, like, think uh, stuff in internet really picks up in Indonesia quickly. If it's if there is an actor or famous cele Indonesian celebrity who is using it, everyone is gonna use it. So, okay. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, like. I think right now also because Elon Musk just buy Bitcoin and everyone knows about Elon Musk. Oh. I get a lot of like question about Bitcoin. Oh, I can well imagine. Yeah, period. that must be a boost to the, yeah, to the, what do you call it? To the, uh, um, you know, spreading of the, um, uh, it's a trend probably for a lot of people, but how, is there an estimate like how many people of the 300 million people are, let's just say really just on Bitcoin only, or, or, or I just, you know, at least started investing into Bitcoin. Are there any estimates for, for Indonesia? That's very hard to answer. Like, I mean, at least the data that I got, uh, I was just talking to, uh, the CEO of Pintu. Pintu is like one of the crypto exchange in Indonesia. And then they say like, right now it's only like roughly around one million people like do using crypto exchange uh but um i mean their target is like to get like 10 million at least like 10 percent of people but uh there is actually some kind of uh, experiment that that uh i think two years ago someone just like trying to introduce like this 
token uh, to Indonesia. Like there's a small group of people whenever like, you know, you get someone to um, to join the token, then they get like five more. And they, they do this like in, in, they did this in the many countries, but Indonesia is like ranked number one as, as the biggest spread of this token. So uh, I believe that the mass adoption is, is coming in Indonesia. Uh, but it just take time and it takes a lot of uh, education because in Indonesia, when it comes to things in internet or investment, investment is very, uh, like a lot of people not doesn't really uh, understood, understand about investment, like the, the financial literacy is not very good in here. So um, yeah, just, just to educate people why it's important to invest and which are the uh, product that you need to invest because there's a lot of scams. So yeah. uh, that's that's the biggest hurdle, which is education. Yeah, that's a classical problem. Unfortunately, everywhere, just you know, people. There's always people trying to take advantage of of the lack of the knowledge of people. So, um, do you like what is it economically? What, do you have inflation? Like, or do you do you, uh, like do people feel the pain, economical pain, or what's the social economical situation in Indonesia? Um, so, in 1998, we are actually going through a hyperinflation like in Indonesia right now the smallest uh, yeah the smallest coin is 100 rupiah and then like 100,000 rupiah that's equal to $8 <laughs> wow. so yeah. we we got this hyperinflation happened in 90 yeah 1998 and it's we are kind of like riding the the hyperinflation but uh, actually if i read the data the inflation rate is going down. In how much is it? Do you know how COVID? much it is? Like, uh, I need to check that again. Okay. But I think less than two percent, but it's it was actually uh, improvement because the inflation is actually going down in 2020. But that's before COVID. Uh, we haven't had the new data right now uh, after COVID. But at least, uh, I mean, I'm just like looking at and in the market. Yeah, like. Okay. Like how much is the price of tomato and all these things? It's going yeah, up. So, exactly. uh, yeah, uh, maybe like when I have uh, better data, I can present that. Yeah, because, you know, I mean, the mainstream economics, uh, they're trying to somehow deceive the public with the consumer price index, which is not the real uh, inflation rate, as you know, and uh it's, it's much higher, especially when you look, you know, it's, of course, different forms of inflation, asset inflation, monetary inflation, you know, product, uh, whatever, consumer goods inflation. But um, it's, uh, it's, a decept it's very deceptive how, you know, how the, the story is being told. Um, so, Dia, you, uh, you have a lot of, I mean, um, of, of uh, educational resources. Do you want to talk about a little bit your, about your podcast about like uh, you're also a DJ on the side? I think that's that's awesome. That's a really amazing. You have a blog, a YouTube channel, which I'm which I've already subscribed on. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know. I, I just I just like to learn new things, and um, yeah. I mean, the podcast that I'm doing is called My Bitcoin Story, and it was actually started when I met Robert Breedlove when he was visiting here in Bali. Uh -huh. And then we were like just talking and just like, oh, yeah, let's do a podcast. And I thought like, what kind of a podcast that I need to do? And I think, uh, I mean, everyone is when, 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 when they talk about Bitcoin, they talk a lot about, you know, economy and fiat and all this thing. But I feel like, uh, if you talk about Bitcoin from a personal story, from mm. your own personal journey, I think people can relate that more often. And especially if after doing like several episodes right now, I, I interview a lot of people. I see like it, there is like this similar journey, how people got into Bitcoin. They buy Bitcoin and then they they start trading it and then they start going into this sh the shit coin rabbit hole as well and then uh lost money and in the end all this uh all this path go will gonna 
it back to Bitcoin again. So I think that's very interesting. Um, yeah, I just I just like to to learn a lot about stuff, and I think I think the more you learn about Bitcoin, the more you can see how Bitcoin is actually uh, present in many aspect of life, kind of mm-hmm. like that. I I like um, I watch the uh, talk between Ross Stephen and and Michael Saylor, and he said Ross Stephen said when you start. Uh, uh, Yeah, when you start learning about Bitcoin, you think in Bitcoin. Exactly. Think... Yes. <laughs> language. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally. like a language. You feel the language. You you behave uh, maybe even differently. You maybe even your gestures, your mimics. <laughs> I mean, everything. Your your thoughts and emotions just change, right? I mean, and yeah, I mean, I mean, money is like something that uh, I mean, we interact with money all the time, and it's 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 encoded in us. So when we when we learn about different type of money then we also encoded different yeah we need to rewire our brain as well and i think it's very fascinating like this uh yeah this new technology this new money bitcoin <laughs> you've made some really interesting you know twitter th- uh, uh, comments or threads um One one aspect I want to talk to you about, which I already you know had written to you about, is this uh, this yin and yang, or you know the feminine and masculine, but maybe more on a still. Let's just stay on the material, monetary, structural level, because you know, as you know, mm-hmm. I don't have to tell you there's a there's an unbelievable you know uh, not only inequality but like disbalance in in the in in the in the monetary economical social structures like if you look at all the mm-hmm. you know the central banks the financial whatever um, megalomania the corporate complex uh, the economy is all like dominated by men do you see like when you when I, if i ask you like about your vision do you have a vision like when it comes to the balancing out of the masculine if you want to call it like like feminine and masculine energy and spirit to you know to 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 finally create a balance in the in the you know in the structures like you know when it comes to let's just say technological innovation production uh, creativity um you know like um, there should be like a balance but it's definitely not like it's uh, all the structures are dominated and owned and controlled by men to 95%. Do you have an opinion on that? Um, well, first of all, uh, I think uh, yin and yang is very fascinating. It's just about like, you know, uh, you are dancing between these two different energy. And if you balance, if you are in balance, then you create a harmony, then uh yeah life will be much easier and everything will run smoothly and in 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 chinese medicine even they say like if um so yin is mostly yeah we can say like a feminine energy but it's also like dark or cold and yang is like more heat and uh, masculine and action kind of like that uh and if you uh, are too much in yin or too much in yang then you will get sick and i i think that our current economies right now is too much on the on the yang side and not in the yin side or like basically there's not there there is imbalance in there so um and it's not it's not only just uh, oh yeah because there's a lot of men uh in 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 the economy uh, like you know uh in the economy world but Uh, every person has their own both masculine and feminine energy uh, but uh, and I also see this in in Bitcoin like in in my Twitter t- thread like I see that uh, Bitcoin actually uh, try to balance this out because um, there are I don't know like there's a certain aspect of like um, Uh, there's no such thing as right and wrong i have to say there's only just a spectrum kind of like that so like for in, for example like um oh, in, in terms of economy right uh when you say uh yin like um there there's a lot of about things like you know uncertainties or risk or volatility that's like a yin yin market energy but like in yang energy 
that's like more about st- stabilize optimism you know of yeah seeing in the future kind of like that and you can see that you know it's uh, in 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 bitcoin the price is very volatile it's like so much uncertainty oh my god will the price goes up tomorrow we like or will it go down you know like everyone is always so anxious but you zoom out and you see the yearly chart is actually really optimistic like uh it's always goes up or um or also like in, in economy like because like yin is like female energy so there's all about like collaboration you know embracing and then yang you know the the male energy is like about competition right and then you can also see in uh, in bitcoin uh, all the nodes are collaborate together uh, to share uh, share the ledger but um, they are competing with each other to get the reward of bitcoin you know so uh, I think it's very cool to see how how this play out, uh, and we also need to be very uh, as as someone who use Bitcoin, uh, we also need to balance to be balanced. You know, like if we are feeling, let's say, uh, if I could come back again to like you know about the the market volatility, and then you if you are too much focusing on that, you will lose sight of the the yang energy so we have to we have to be able to see both sides so it's it's never it's never like uh only black and white kind of like that yeah i totally agree with you that uh, in every human being with a man woman or whatever there's there's this you know uh, there's both like feminine and masculine energy spirit even hormones <laughs> so uh so yeah, the, the reason I'm asking you is that, you know, I mean, you must have a vision, like you must have some kind of imagination, vision of a desire, dream, what what a Bitcoinized or hyper Bitcoinized world could look like on a social level, you know, on an interactive level, on an economical, even spiritual, technological level, especially, which really is, is highly of interest to me, because, um, you know, I've always asked myself, why isn't there you know, on in any 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 other aspect of of our of our existence of our technological things going on, not much uh, progress or innovation going on. So I see more women than coming in, and you know, and as you said, you know, women have a different approach to things, right? They, mm-hmm. they you know, whatever that is, you know, like more cooperation, collaboration, more creativity. Uh, so it's this, yeah, it's this balancing out of yin and yang. Uh, which I wanted to talk to you about, like, what is your vision? Like, uh, um, do, do you see like a hyper Bitcoinized world in ten or twenty years, or sooner or later? Well, this is just my personal opinion. <laughs> I mean, I'm not expert, but uh, I think I think we are uh, moving towards the hyper Bitcoinization uh, era uh, with with like if. I mean, like I said before, like our current economy is actually sick. Like, you know, we are too much, too much focusing on like, uh, yeah, like not, not focusing on both of the yin and yang. Like we are uh, either like the government printing too much money. uh, They, they don't use logic. They just like, uh, yeah, they just like use like the feeling of like, yeah, we need to print more money because we can kind of like that. And not seeing in the logical side or, or like, oh, yeah, we need to um, uh, embrace everyone and everyone needs to have a universal basic income. But they didn't see like, you know, there is an aspect of how do we going to pay this, like, you know, uh, this sort of stuff. So, um, so I think, I think like in the world of hyper Bitcoinization, um, I think people will uh people will be people will be uh seeing and then and then do the economy activity in i think in more balanced way at least uh because because like it's not only just there is a productivity uh aspect in bitcoin but there's also uh an aspect of like like saving and and all this thing, right? Like if you talk about like the current economy, everything is all about debt. So like people are spending, 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 and they don't have saving. And then uh, I think that's the 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 point of like 
to start a family, you need to kind of like creating a legacy and then save something. But if you are like in, in the economy where everything that you do is always about spending, spending, spending because you are in debt, then uh, you will not creating a legacy. You will not continue having a family. And I see this like also in in many like Bitcoiners, like people in people in Bitcoin, uh, people who are like in in Bitcoin or like people in Twitter and Bitcoin Twitter, they look like really. Um, yeah, all about doom and gloom. They're like, oh yeah, the whole economy is gonna collapse, blah blah blah. But they're actually very optimistic people, and they they have family, and they're they see the future. Uh, they see a hope in the future, in as as compared to, uh, I don't know, people who are not uh, going into Bitcoin. They see like, oh my God, this is the end of the world. Uh, what's the point of having family? Kind of like that. And I think the. The purpose, again, like if you see microeconomy, we also need to see microeconomy. So the purpose of like the the continuation of economy is from a family first. And you need to see a brighter future uh, by changing your monetary system. Mm -hmm. And do you mean like by microeconomy, like local, more localized, more independent, more decentralized economies, uh, which, which I want to talk to you about is also, you know, the, like, do you have a vision like for, because there's a lot of talk, you know, in the Bitcoin community about citadels of free private cities, you know, I've had some conversations with Jeff Booth and Titus Gable of free private cities, really fascinating. And I read his book and, and like, do you have a vision for that? Like where people can finally, you know, uh, withdraw themselves from this legacy system and, and, and just create to build their own decentralized, the totally detached from the legacy system. Is that something you can aspire to? Um, I think, I think like we, we see right now, even like during COVID time, like people are start uh, to, uh, yeah, kind of like choosing their, their side kind of like that like whether they want to be in the side of uh you know like this economy that will gonna collapse soon or people who choose that okay like there's an alternative and i want to build something better right and and we we already see stuff like this start happening with which like a uh, little community like self-sustaining communities that have their own water they have their own electricity and food uh i think it's just a matter of uh it will be like very natural you know natural movement once you get to know about bitcoin you will start rethink about your life re reprioritize your life a little bit and then uh yeah it's just gonna weave into into like this this community and i i don't know if it's going to be a city or a citadel or whatever but at least it will be a community driven um and yeah uh people will 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 build will build something exciting you know in in the new in the new economy i think do you think it will because there's a lot of you know uh, even hardcore bitcoin as they say that we're still sort of in a honeymoon phase of bitcoin or i would call rom romantic phase mm -hmm. um and, you know, I mean, what we are up to is is actually against, this is the separation, final frontier, like the separation of money versus state. We're talking about, a, I mean, an unbelievable, uh, you know, extremely powerful fiat uh, system, central banks, state nations, nation states, uh, and the military industrial complex. <laughs> Do you think what what is the what is the transition phase? What 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 kind of transition phase do you see? I mean, what what kind of battle, if you want to call it, are we up to? Hmm. It's hard to see the future as I'm not in a, like a <laughs> psychic, but um, uh, I see. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, it's it's interesting. It's a very interesting question, like how we can see the futures plays out, but. Um, my, like, yeah, my prediction is it's not going to be pretty for sure. There will be a lot of, yeah, we like Bitcoiner will be faced with a lot of hard choices and then, uh, there will be a restriction in the movement, like in the, in the money, in the movement and everything. And, um, people just need to be prepared. Like, um, yeah, 
start at least uh, as I can think move your money and do self custody for your own bitcoin uh and then really really uh take security and privacy seriously uh for your uh yeah for your money and um but i also believe that because bitcoin is all about decentralization is a trustless system and um so it's also anti fragile uh people will adapt to that uh <laughs> there is a famous quote by uh what is that guy the one in from Jurassic Park who say life will find its way something like that oh so yeah yeah <laughs> yeah uh-huh. <laughs> funny <laughs> so i think the same thing like bitcoin will find its way people who s- still believe in bitcoin will will f- will find their way uh i mean Satoshi Nakamoto not only just uh, give us, uh, you know, Bitcoin, but it's also plant us the idea of a decentralized money that I don't think this is ever come across in anyone's mind that, you know, you can decentralize money in, in, in this um, with the current technology that we have. And technology is just going to grow. Technology, um, I mean, it is just a tool but you can either use it to control more people or create a freedom. So again, it come back to the principle of Bitcoin. It's all about choices, right? Like you choose to enter, you choose to buy Bitcoin, you choose to hold your Bitcoin and you choose to, yeah, you choose to um, use Bitcoin, I guess, like uh, for, for your, for your life. Awesome. Um, can I ask you like, what, what is your, like your friends, family, react to you like when when you when you tell them about bitcoin is that is that too personal or no <laughs> no it's it's funny because um in the beginning um yeah it's it's it's, it's a very interesting journey because like I, I i you know when i when i was like sharing stuff about uh bitcoin and people were like make fun of me like oh yeah they they are just all about bitcoin right now <laughs> But I just like I just don't care. I think whatever I uh, I shared, uh, um, there must be someone who who uh, will be intrigued by it or like become curious and then want to ask. And it's it's true. Like every uh, at least every week, I will get like my one of my friend will message me random friend from uh, elementary school or like a university just message me. Uh, but I found it very interesting uh, within my family because I keep talking about Bitcoin over and over again uh, my sister she is a doctor and and you know like uh, as a doctor you normally uh, you don't want to think too much about investment um, i mean they they got paid really well and then they um, yeah i mean uh, it's not very much of their priorities but <clears throat> as soon as i'm like talking about bitcoin and then during this whole covid thing doctors also got affected with the whole um, yeah, I mean the, the economy is slowing down, so obviously the the income is slowing down as well. So uh, my sister is actually start to invest on Bitcoin, like buying Bitcoin, and then I uh, I uh, tell her to you know DCA the every day, kind of like that, and she see like uh, the amount of money that she put into Bitcoin is has has actually surpassed her salary even like for two, three months. Really? And my mom, yeah. And then my mom will start talking about Bitcoin to her relative. I mm-hmm. thought that's that's kind of awesome. I, I think, uh, and, and you can also see that, you know, people, um, like, I think the, 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 the smallest unit is actually from your family. And once your family start to get it, uh, they can tell your uh, their relative, their relative will get it, and then it's just and then spread all from of a sudden there. we have a credibility more, you know, like in, <laughs> <laughs> like um, okay. So do they see that? Like, do they understand like the store of value functional Bitcoin? Or is it just because they see there's some kind of investment? Is that um, it's it's a slow process, right? Mm-hmm. But um, uh, I guess right now, like at least at least in my in my family, they see it, you know, as Bitcoin is actually a better saving technology than uh, just, you know, save your money in bank because they see like, 
oh, you know, during this whole COVID time, actually the the interest rate is not, you know, it's not really helpful. Like right now prices going up, like they're so like their their savings dry up, stuff like that. So uh, when they start even just a small amount of Bitcoin that they put and then it's actually growing, uh, they see like, oh yeah, rather than me saving my money in bank, maybe I should just save my money in Bitcoin, you know? And uh, I think for me, it's just like try to educate slowly from just saving your money not trading it because you know immediately people when they see like the money go up and then they see like oh there's different coins and then they they try to ask me like okay which other coin that i need to invest like i'm just no just focus on bitcoin just dca and everything is gonna be okay (laughs) the yin and yang you know like keep your balance (laughs) keep your balance yeah if That's you want to try, it's okay, but just put like, you know, maybe $10 and then <laughs> yeah. forget about it. Yeah. You're right. You know, I mean, you mentioned it uh, just just before that, that, you know, every person goes through an uh, educational journey, you know, whatever that is, shitcoin area. I, I even traded at the beginning, like 2016, 17, you know, because I didn't understand like whole tokenization, ICO bullshit. It's, it's just, you know, you get trapped into this whole thing, but then you stay in for the principles, for the ethos, for the ethics or for the vision of it. And, you know, for, for a much bigger picture, uh, what, what is Bitcoin, what Bitcoin, you know, is made of. Um, uh, so do, do you, do you think that, you know, as soon as people go through this, um, cycles if you want to call it of phases you know of fud and of uncertainty and and, yeah, and 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 fear uncertainty doubt and maybe even go through a cycle whatever halving cycle and they see you know they they witness for themselves because they have for the first time skin in the game they see you know it just exponentially like growing and growing and growing right it's just a vertical curvature do you think that this will eventually you know uh extrapolate to other people too much faster when it comes to education to knowledge to mm-hmm. taking action i think i i think yeah i think like um uh i think that's why coming back to your question about citadel and community like you know be uh be part of the community and then because it's it's easy to get lost i guess if you are if you're buying, start buying like shitcoin and then like go, you know, get trapped into FOMO and FUD. Um, if you don't have a community that also focusing on Bitcoin and then like really understand the fundamental of why you should uh, buy Bitcoin and why it's important to you, then it's, it's, it's easy to, to get trapped in the fear cycle. Um, so uh, I think... Uh, as as a bitcoiner people who are already uh yeah already went through all these cycles and understand i think it is everyone uh, I, I won't say responsibility but but it's it's a part uh, if, if if you really like bitcoin then you should also uh, create like this community around you and and try to educate them because then maybe some people will give up maybe uh more people will joining in like we don't know right uh and i think that's also the beauty of bitcoin because there is no bitcoin marketer there is no bitcoin salesperson everyone is the marketer (laughs) so (laughs) yeah (laughs) i've seen you um on twitter like uh you've also translated i think gg's because i've you know i mean I've, I've known him now for a long time and what are your like your 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 favorite educators and and who, why 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 do you think they are the best educators when it comes to like translating this knowledge this comprehensive knowledge you know about bitcoin because it's so vast it's so deep this whole you know rabbit hole who are they if, if you want to like whatever give a shout out to them uh there's a lot. <laughs> I like. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I really like Gigi. Gigi. Uh, he. He when he writes stuff, he's like you know writing in in a very personal level, and then like he is able to uh, explain very complicated technical stuff into something that you can we can understand. And I really like 
you know Robert Breedlove for his meta like observant thinking not only just like seeing it like you know in 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 a in the surface la- level but also like very deep level um uh, Safiden Amos Sa- Safi Sif Safiden Amos. I, yeah. I, I don't also yeah <laughs> <laughs> very confusing how to pronounce his name but yeah his Bitcoin standard book is uh, I think it's it's like the book that everyone should read definitely mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's a lot of uh, people, uh, Nick Carter as well, like he's always very cool in, in <laughs> like, you know, exp- uh, yeah, take on like different debate with like uh, Bitcoin naysayer, <laughs> you know. Yeah, he's amazing. The guy's so, so intelligent. Sometimes I'm, I'm wondering who, how do they channel all this knowledge, this intelligence into the brain, you know. It's just... Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. But, but this is very interesting about Bitcoin because there's so many entry points, there's so many things that you need to learn, and you just like, didn't get bored of it, you know. Like, and everything else is just like uh, everything that you learn suddenly come back to the the core principle of Bitcoin, which is like you know decentralized and scarce. And uh, yeah, I think uh, I think that. I, I, I can see that there will be more and more people, more and more thinker out, you know, out there that will uh, contribute to the Bitcoin space. And um, we, we, are, we are learning as we go. <laughs> Together we learn. <laughs> right. So listen, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this talk, but I want to I wanna wrap this up still and go back to a little bit or extend a little bit the, the point I was, I was trying to make like with the vision. Like if, if you wanted to make like a commercial or a short video, how would you translate that, you know, the, the beauty of Bitcoin, like what it can create, what it can, uh, you know, cause a chain reaction of prosperity, abundance, uh, technological innovation, freedom, decentralization, whatever you, how would you, how would you pack this into a, into a video or into a message, you know, for, for the people, let's say in Indonesia. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is a very tough question. <laughs> yeah. And you have like <laughs> three to, minutes, uh, like three or five minutes video. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, wow. Okay. I, I let me think. <laughs> um, well, I, I think, I think what what really struck me actually um, that Bitcoin is actually uh, the best store of value that you can possibly have because it's only 21 million and everything is divided into 21 million. So it's an infinity that is divided into 21 million in comparison to our current money whether you are a billionaire like jeff bezos or trillionaire yeah and trillionaire divided into infinity is zero and infinity divided into 21 million is yeah it's infinity basically <laughs> like your your value is gonna go up so um i think i think bitcoin is um is the perfect representation of human possibilities because human um yeah like we 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 have a lot of uh, we spend a lot of like our our time and energy into creating something beautiful and uh and this is actually very valuable like human time and energy is very valuable and the only way for you to measure that is actually to put it into something that has really unlimited value because the value is always going to go up. Like, you know, how, how Mona Lisa, how Mona Lisa painting is like uh, being enjoyed for centuries is because uh, the brilliance of human ingenuity and that value need to be also stored in some kind of a money that will not lose, will not be valued like our current system. I think that's it. <laughs> oh, beautifully put. Well said, well said. Yeah. So yeah. Um, there are any final thoughts? Like um, if you want to like uh, give us or, or mention your, your podcast, your Twitter handle or whatever. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. For those who, 
uh, enjoy or like want to listen about different uh, stories about Bitcoin journey, uh, you can check out my uh, podcast channel called My Bitcoin Stories in Spotify. Um, and then my YouTube channel is Dearskita and my blog is Dearskita.com. Unfortunately, it's in Bahasa Indonesia, so this is for Bahas, uh, for Indonesian viewer. But uh, maybe I'm, I'm I'm thinking about also writing something in English as well. Uh, and for those listener who are in, in Indonesia, you can also join uh, Class Bitcoin. Uh, so you can follow the Twitter Class Bitcoin or Instagram and also um, Facebook as well, Class Bitcoin. Awesome. Now I'm going to put those all in the show notes. Well, Dea, it was really a pleasure talking to you. Hope we can you. You know, maybe make <laughs> it up for uh, maybe in a, in a panel discussion. That would be amazing uh, with other international whatever global bitcoiners maybe on sp some specific <laughs> topics i have on my mind but uh, i'll get back to you but thank you so much again and uh, talk to you soon okay yeah thank you kevin yeah bye uh, how'd you like that really enjoyed this talk with dear Ritz kita from indonesia she's a amazing bitcoin educator podcaster blogger really she's a multi-versatile so make sure you follow her on Twitter. I'm going to put those, all her links on the show notes. If you have any questions, please email me at hello at the totalconnector.com or kd at kvandavani.com. I'm the host of the uh, podcast show and YouTube show. Now it's called the, the Kvan Davani Connection. Well, thank you so much again for your support and for listening, and I'll see you soon again.